So in this one, we are going to be kind of filling out our player list. However, we're not going to be getting any sort of actual name from the player. Instead, we're going to be just doing kind of like player 0, player 1, 2, etc. When we get into the point of actually making our profiles and all that kind of stuff, then we will be using those names instead. So now, well, actually we can really just get started. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this text block here and just flat out remove it. It's not going to be needed. And here we have our vertical box. Now I'm going to give this a name. Do VB underscore, let's see, player list and set it as a variable. I'm going to save it. Now let's head over to the graph. VB player list. Let's controls. Do widget info. So here we have our vertical list or vertical box player list. And inside of on lobby updated, what we're gonna do, I'm gonna delete the print string and do a for loop or a for each. And pretty much set we're gonna get the player list. Actually I wanna clear the list first. So whatever do remove let's see here not sure what that is Steve was it clear children there it is clear children and connect it back up so I'm just going to clear the children out because I well, don't really want it to be, um, we don't want to be adding on to what names we currently have. We'll just be duplicating it at that point. So what I want to do is I'm going to take it, I want to create an actual widget here. I'm going to do create widget. Type is going to be text. All right, I can't do that just yet. So that means we're going to create a custom widget. So in main menu level, let's create a new widget. Let's do w underscore player lobby slot. And delete the canvas panel. Add in some, let's see, not input. Yeah, it would just be normal text. I want to go to desired and change it to player. Here, let's do player name. All right, so what we're going to do is on the class, we're going to create w underscore player lobby slot and compile. So from here in our graph, I'm going to delete the tick and the preconstruct, and I'm going to make a new variable. And it's going to be a type string and call it player name. And set it to instance editable and expose it on spawn. And what we're going to do is we're going to take this text block. I'm going to do tb underscore p layer name. Set it as a variable. I'm going to take it and get the text box. I'm going to do set text. And the in text is going to be player name. But converted to text. File and save. Now here, when we go back to our main menu, we now see that we have a player name option to uh, input when we create it. So I want to take the array element and plug it into player name. Compile and save. And what I'm going to do is I want to take our player list box, I mean player vertical box, do add child to vertical box. And what I'm going to add is the return value of our create widget. So it's going to add w player lobby slot to it. And now we need to kind of fill it. So what we're going to do is Nazi Zombie Beacon Host Object. We're going to override the default begin play. So that way we can have our host being in the um 
uh, what you call it, our host being the very first one in the playlist. So it's going to be added automatically when it's created. So let's see. Just do that right down here. Or actually, down here. Virtual void begin play override and create the definition. Type this quicker. Oh my gosh, it does not take this long. <laughs> oh boy. All right, cancel. I'm going to create it myself. Super begin play. There, problem solved. So on begin play, what we're going to do is we're going to add to the client from the player list. So what we're going to do is we're going to do lobby info dot player list. What we're going to do is we're going to add to it. So we're going to do dot add. And what we're going to add is a name. So we're going to do f string player or host just for now because I'm not actually getting our actual own player name or anything like that. That will be done later. So we have the host being added. I'm going to do that. Copy that. And on client connected, what we're going to do is we're going to take if it's valid, get the player list. We're going to do dot add. And we're going to add is f string. Do player, and we're going to actually create a custom string for this. So f string player name, equals, well, yeah, then we're going to try to append to it. So player name dot append. And what we're going to append is uh, the size of the TRA. So what was it called? Lobby info dot layer list dot um dot let's see. Let's do f string from int. And what we're going to be converting from an int is the size of the array. So now let's compile and save. And uh, wait, yeah, I did append it. Never mind. All right, give this a try. So, host game. All right, nothing's over there. So, we got to fix something somewhere. So, let me print a log on begin play just to see that it is, in fact, firing.
and compile. I don't know why I opened two. We can play, so it is firing. Let's see what happens when we connect, see if anything changes. All right, so we get it updated on the client, but not the host. So I think I see what's going on. We're not actually firing the event on the uh, host. So that's one thing I did not think about. So I can read of that log and we need to think of a way to update ourselves so we can do that with a broadcast very simple we can create our own custom one so I'm going to actually just literally copy what we currently have and our beacon client Then whenever we update the lobby info, I broadcast it. So we do f on lobby f on lobby updated dot broadcast. And we pass in lobby info. I'm gonna close the editor down, compile, and reopen it. And then we should bind the event to the online host beacon. I was wondering if having it in the header is going to screw with anything because we're kind of duplicating it. That's kind of what I figured. I think that's the reason. So I'm going to do f host, f1 host lobby. and give that a try and see if that fixes it. So that way we're not creating two, um, I think the reason behind that issue was because we're including the header inside of the header of our beacon client, which that appears to be the issue. So let's relaunch Word or the project. menu, go to where we create the host beacon. What we're going to do is we're going to bind to it. So we're going to get beacon host. We're going to bind on host lobby updated. Gonna add a custom and I cannot do that fortunately in here. So on create host beacon, I think what I want to make it do is return. Let's see. Make it return the host beacon instead. Let's do Nazi Zombie Beacon Host Object. It's gonna be an object reference. Beacon host. Then we're going to do get beacon host and make that the return. So that way, instead of returning a Boolean, it returns the beacon host. Then in the event graph, break that down. You can just do it is valid. Pretty much reconnect everything. So if it's valid, I want to bind on an event on uh, host lobby updated. Add a custom event on host lobby updated. 
actually. I wonder if I can tie the event into it. Maybe not. We'll just bind it. So from here, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did on the client, which is essentially this minus the um, setting of the map info. So when the event gets created, break the lobby info, plug in the player list to the player array, and that should set everything up for us. Let's just check and see if that's the case. Here's our host, connect, host player one, and just host. So we need to make sure we're firing it. So we update it on update lobby info. We need to broadcast on the client connected as well. So moving it into our R and client connected. And let's just make sure this works for both the host and the client real quick. And then look at the other issue that I think is going to be prevalent. So they're both working. Now when another client joins, I'm not entirely sure if the... Actually, we may have it set up that way. All right, so we got player one, two, three, player one, two, three, and host and player one. So we need to fix that. And I think that's due to here. Now we're calling client on lobby updated when the client connects. We need to figure out how to broadcast that, or not broadcast. Well, it should actually update, I think. Let's see. On lobby updated, we look through the player list, add everything like normal. We're not looping through the previous client. I don't know why I didn't think of that. So we can kind of ignore this and instead call update client lobby info instead. So I'm going to do update client lobby info and compile. So that way, when the new client connects, everything should be handled and it automatically it should update the remaining, well, any clients that are currently in the lobby. Because the client that was in the 
one that was missing the player two was the first client that joined. So connect. And that curiosity. Oh, that's broken. That's pretty neat. Oh, that's why. This one's the host. All right, so it changed. Just test that again. Host player one. Host player one. Connect on the third client. Host player one, player two. Host player one, player two. And host player one, player two. So now all of the clients are connecting, well, are seeing the players that have joined the lobby, which is good. That's what we want. So be one small change that I would want to make. And I want you, I'll just do that in the next video, keep it short. But we now have it. So when we see the host, we see the player one, see player two, and so on as they connect on through and that continually gets updated. So in the next video, we'll fix an issue that I see that, well, we need to add something to make it so when the client leaves, that it actually kicks out. We actually um, are able to leave, we'll remove that slot from the server list. So I will see you in the next one when we do that.